and gentlemen, to Attack of the Remakes here on Reaction and Review. Yes, guys, I am dedicating this entire month to movie remakes, and I know a lot of you out there have been following me for a while, but for those of you who are kind of new to my channel, I guess I should try to try to explain that as a that as a general rule, I find the very concept of remaking movies to be rather lazy and stupid. Now that honestly is not to say that remakes as a general rule are bad, because there have been some amazing remakes out there. Stuff like fucking Scarface and Little Shop of Horrors immediately come come to mind. I really don't think that any of the movies here are going to match the quality of the Little Shop musical or 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 the 1980s Scarface, but there is still hope that some of these are going to be good, and we're going to kick the month off with a movie that came out in 2005. That movie is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Now, I understand that this isn't technically a remake as much as it's a second movie adapting the same novel, but because most people, when they think of when they think of Charlie. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory immediately think of immediately think of the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory film. I'm going to count this as a remake. Now, on that note, I absolutely adored Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory as a kid, and the movie has held up very, very well lo these many years. I'm not really sure what what exactly Tim Burton is hoping to add to this film. Um, I'm certainly hoping for it to be decent, and because it's from Tim Burton, my, I mean, my, my, my hopes are kind of high that it's going to be good, because Tim Burton knows how to make decent movies. But this thing could, could turn out to be a total turd. I have no earthly clue. The only way I'm going to find out, guys, if this thing is any good at all, is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I am going to say this much, guys. This movie sh just beautifully showed just the uh, just the pure pure insanity around the world as everybody wants to get these golden golden tickets. That that small sequence looked amazing. I really fucking liked it. You know, guys, I, I, I totally understand that the point of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is that every single kid shy of Charlie is a, is a, is an horrendous, unlikable douchebag. This movie has made them far more unlikable than I could have ever imagined. And I and I already know what happens because I've read the book and I've seen the fucking and I've seen and I've seen the original movie. But I also know Tim Burton is a dark motherfucker. I want all four of these kids to not just get horribly punished and you know sent off on their merry way. I want them all to fucking die. That is how unlikable they are in this fucking movie. Wow. When Tim Burton wants to make characters horrendously unfucking likable, man, he fucking shoots for the stars, doesn't he? You know, guys, there really is something about the way that Johnny Depp plays Willy fucking Wonka. It makes it so lovable. I honestly think it's just the fact that he's so fucking snarky. He's so just, he just seems like such like a snarky douchebag like airhead. With slight hints of, you know, parent issues. That was kind of an interesting bit from earlier in the film. Anyway, I'm absolutely digging the way that Depp is playing the character. And it's going to make this whole tour fucking awesome. You know, guys, there is something incredibly satisfying about watching a spoiled rich fucking bitch getting attacked by an army of squirrels. In fact, shit, this honestly is even better than what happened to Veruca in the fucking original Wonka film, man. This is... That, that is really nice. I honestly could probably watch just two hours of this fucking bitch getting just, you know, attacked by these, by these fucking squirrels. This is awesome, man. You know, guys, out of all of the fucking Oompa Loompa songs this movie's had... I think this one's probably the best so far. 
Then again, that's also because this one here's got a little bit more of like a rocking sound to it. It's fucking awesome. Plus also the fact that now we're finally rid of Mike, that's... That is amazing, because the little fucking bastard was just starting to get on my last nerve. Even worse than in the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I'm happy that we're not going to have to put up with him in about two minutes. Still, though, uh, really liking the fucking song. Well, guys, that was Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Let me shut that off. Okay, um... I think the first thing I have to sort of voice is because I know that I can't get out of covering this thing and not directly comparing it to the previous Willy Wonka or Charlie and the Chocolate Factory movie. Um, I'm going to tell you, this is a lot better than I thought. Mind you, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory has a high prominent spot in, in my childhood memories. It is a fantastic movie and I absolutely adore it. Um, and I didn't really expect this one to be as good as that. It totally is. Um, as for which film is better, I really couldn't pick a better between the, the, uh, two, because where this film shines, or elements where this film shines, it also sort of falls off in, in certain spots, which are made up in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. This right here, guys, is one of those rare instances where a remake is as good as the original film. Now, some of that has to do with uh, just like just like little things. Because one thing that uh, most people who grew up on Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory know is that every single Oompa Loompa song was the exact same song but with different lyrics. Here, they here they went to great lengths to write completely new songs for each of the Rotten Children, which is very, very cool. I really liked how... I, I really liked how they were able to at least do that much, and we got a totally different song for every for every kid. That was, that was awesome. Uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory hinted at the uh, sequel book, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, this movie actually utilizes elements from that for the final act, which is amazing, because that's as close as we're ever going to get to a proper sequel getting made because of how pissed off Roald, Roald Dahl, the author of the book, was with how Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory turned out. He then put it in, he then put it in his will that no one's ever going to adapt Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator. So, this right here is as close as we're as we're going to get is the little bits that are used here, and that's and that is fantastic. Um, so I sort of wanted to make a little bit of a comparison between the two movies before I just dive right into this film specifically. Now let's talk about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. The uh, writing. Well, once more, this is this is this is based on a beloved children's book. Written by one of the best children's authors of all time, Roald, Roald Dahl. And the story carries over very, very well. Uh, and it's done, in, it is done incredibly well. Uh, they, now, they did have to make a couple of changes. Um, certain ones are certainly for the better. Others, probably not quite, not quite, you know, so much. Now, now this also is sort of a comparison with, with Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, so just bear with me. Um... Because one thing about Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is that, really, the only kids who came off as genuinely rotten and terrible and kind of sort of and kind of sort of deserved the bullshit that they went through, were let me see, it was Veruca and Augustus, just simply because of how those two acted and what they fucking did, and Violet and Mike almost seemed to come off as just. You know, well, Violet, well, Violet chews, you know, gum. Mike watches a lot of TV. This movie actually makes those, makes those, makes those two characters just as bad as the other two. So now it almost seems to justify when they, when they find, when they finally get their karmic, when they finally get their karmic punch, 
punch in the face and the Oompa Loompas have to, you know, like roll them off or wheel them off or pull them out of the, or like pull them out of the garbage chute or what have you. So at least that works. So we now have more than just Mike is horribly, horribly addicted to TV. Mike is absolutely desensitized by video games, uh, which I thought seemed a little bit heavy-handed and stupid, but oh well. He also is an insufferable know-it-all, uh, which just which just rub which just rubs me the you know wrong way, and probably rubs a lot of viewers the wrong way. So when so when he finally gets his shit, you are happy to see it happen to him. And Violet has been turned into, like, this try-hard, I-have-to-win-at-everything champion. And she will not shut up about it. She has this colossal fucking ego. And when, and when her shit happens to her, when she finally chews on that stick of, uh, that, 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 that stick of fucking experimental gum, you're happy to see it happen to her because she just gets on your nerves for the time that she's there. So... Plus side here, they actually made uh, all four, all four of the other kids absolutely unlikable shitheads. And when everything finally happens to them, you are happy to see it happen to them. Um, however, I, I, I will say that there seems to be a little bit less focus on Charlie in this film. Which is shocking, considering the fact that the title of this movie is the same as the title of the book. And the book followed Charlie more than it followed anything else. And Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory went to great lengths to really follow Charlie's, Charlie's, you know, like, I guess, journey. And here, in here, Charlie kind of gets sucked into the background during during the whole factory, you know, tour, which is which is totally fine. I I honestly don't 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 mind that too much. It just feels a little bit weird that our title character plays almost no real role in anything outside of asking uh, outside of asking Wonka a question that shoots him into one of his numerous Vietnam like Viet fucking fucking like V fucking like Vietnam ish flashbacks about his horrible father. Speaking of that, I actually kind of like how um, in the previous film, Willy Wonka was just kind of sort of odd, but he was still rather innocent. Here, Wonka is Wonka is a dark, cynical douchebag who just wants who. Who always who always has a snarky comment for everything, and not only that, he also has horrendous issues involving his father, and that gets played out in flashbacks, and that also gets closure in the final act, and it's done incredibly well. Um, so they added a lot more depth to Wonka. However, they had to, as I guess, kind of sort of trade off. Charlie becomes far, far more shallow because we don't focus on him as much. That, to me, I guess, is just like a minor, minor complaint. I'm not, I, I, I honestly am not going to hold it, hold it, hold it against the movie because the movie's still fun. It's just, it would have been nice if we'd have gotten a little bit more of a focus on Charlie. After all, he is our title character. Um, now, now, beyond all of that, beyond the, uh, now, beyond the way that the characters were handled, the film, now the film itself is paced out incredibly well. There are very few moments where this film seems to, you know, seems to, you know, drag. I guess, um, I guess is kind of a positive, uh, once more comparing this to Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. In Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, it felt like it took forever for Charlie to get the fucking golden ticket and for us to go through all the golden ticket shit and then for him to finally get to the factory. This movie, it just it just rockets through it incredibly quick. At least at least to me, it felt like they rushed through all of that faster. Now, a minor problem with that is the fact that it was during it was during the quest for the ticket that we got a lot of the depth with Charlie. So by going and by going and streamlining that and getting to the factory faster. We do now. We do lose a whole lot of the depth with Charlie and his family. Again, though. Again, though. The movie now. The movie is still really good, but I would probably have liked it if they would have, I guess, stretched out that that segment a little bit because it feels a little bit too 
too, too, you know, rushed. Everything else feels fine, it's just the start feels a little bit rushed to me. Uh, the story here is the exact same story that was in the book and in the previous film, and that story is amazing, and it is handled incredibly well. So I, I honestly can say that the writing, even though it has a hitch here, a hitch there, is still incredibly good, and that is fantastic. Now, let's talk about the acting. Uh, the acting in this movie is amazing, and I'm talking from the entire cast. Guys, do you know how difficult it is to find a movie with a cast made up of mostly children and all those children can fucking act? Mind you, I personally am not the biggest fan of, of, you know, children, and I usually try to avoid anything which has more than three, more than three kids in the main fucking cast, because most kids can't act. But here, they found five kids, and motherfucker, they can act, and they all turn in fantastic performances. So, we have that much. I am surprised that Tim Burton was able to find five kids who could actually act. I'm just mind-fucking-blown. Uh, so, we have that. Um, but I have to give all the props in the world to Johnny fucking Depp for making a Willy, for making a Willy, a Willy Wonka who is so memorable is so cynical and snarky but also at the same time lovable and awesome and a lot of that is and a lot of that is in the writing and Johnny Depp brings that to life now that now, now that makes total sense because it is Johnny Depp and Johnny Depp can do damn near anything in terms of acting so i guess i shouldn't be shocked that he was able to make Willy Wonka into his own character but still, it is worth mentioning, and the rest of our cast is fantastic. I absolutely loved every single performance in this movie. All of it is incredibly solid. I I loved the acting here, so we have that. Um, one thing I thought seemed a little bit weird, and uh, I'm, I, I can tell that this was obviously a stylistic choice, but I don't quite see why why they went this, you know, way with it. And it's that the Oompa Loompas are all played by the same guy. All right? That's every Oompa Loompa. It really doesn't matter if it's male or female, or if it's just one who's working in the factory, or is like the high chief in Loompa Land. It's all the same actor. And the guy looks bored in every shot. I, I, I guess if I had to pick one person whose acting was kind of iffy, it was him. And he doesn't have any speaking lines. The, 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 closest he, the closest he gets to speaking is he has to lip sync to other, to other people's dialogues or to the, you know, lyrics in songs. And that's, and that, and even then he looks, he looks ridiculously bored. I don't know why they opted to go with having a single creepy, creepy fucking looking Indian, like, like Indian dude as every fucking Oompa Loompa. It just looked kind of odd, odd, odd to me, and perhaps maybe if he looked like he actually cared about being there, it might have probably made the whole thing a little bit, you know, livelier. Instead, it's probably the one dark spot in terms of acting, is the fact that this guy basically looks as if he doesn't want to fucking be there. And the fact that you see his face hundreds of times, sometimes hundreds of times in the same goddamn shot, you just see a huge wall of bored faces as they're all mouthing, as they're all mouthing along to whichever fucking Oompa Loompa song they're playing that moment. Um, that honestly is like the one negative I have when it comes to acting is the one guy who we see the most by sheer by 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 the sheer point that he's every Oompa Loompa is probably the one who seems to care who seems to care the least. Um, but mind you, that honestly is not enough to bring the whole, the, the, the whole movie down, but it is definitely worth mentioning. Special effects. Here is where uh, we're going to have a little bit of an issue, you see, because this movie came out in 2005, and I remember what CG looked like in 2005, and it, and it was looking incredibly good in most major big-budget films by 2005. Why the hell, then, is a large portion of the CG in this film 
so awful. Like, there are just tons of shots where just things look so off. Like shots of Wonka and whoever else is in the elevator. The whole thing, the characters and the, uh, the, characters and the elevator all modeled in CG, and it looks terrible. There are tons of shots like that where you will just see something, and it's so obviously CG, it almost hurts. And the weird part is, while you have these really janky looking see fucking like shots with, you know, CG, you then have tons of amazing like chroma key bits and the scene and, and the scene where Violet is turning is turning into a giant like blueberry and you can see that it starts purple or, or around her nose and it just spreads. It look that looks awesome and the chroma key looks awesome and the CG used in the like chocolate cho in the fucking like chocolate room looks awesome awesome and unfortunately that is then counterbalanced by shit that looks dated and horrible we also have the fact that they had to fucking like that they had to fucking composite in that boring fucking Eng that boring fucking indian indian dude 50 maybe 60 times in a single shot and all of that looks fine the fact that they had to put him into every shot so that he's only about this fucking tall they made that work and again, all of that makes the really questionable C the really questionable CG bits, things such as things such as like the chocolate pump that is that is sort of that is sort of like flying over the chocolate fucking river, or when the gigantic, I guess, uh, gummy fucking boat is like is just is flying down the chocolate, you know, river, the whole thing looks awful. You then compare that to everything else in the movie which looks fantastic and it just blows my mind because there shouldn't be that kind of a sharp drop off in quality in the same fucking movie it just it just looks weird okay i'm i'm just going to say that right now cg here special effects some of it honestly is really really amazing and that is counterbalanced by stuff that would have looked shit in 1995 so um that's about all i can say for uh, for for special effects, music here is really good, but you see the score. Now the score was done by Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman knows how to make decent fucking music. I would have been surprised if the score sucked. So we do have that. The soundtrack, which is made up essentially of just the fucking Oompa Loompa songs, are awesome. Um, lighting here is really good. Our color work is awesome. Our camera work is fantastic. Guys, when all is said and done, am I able to recommend Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Fuck yes. I can absolutely recommend this thing. It is so good. However, at the same time, I would say that it really does work as a fantastic companion piece to the previous to the previous film Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Both movies have got so many awesome strengths. Both movies also have noticeable weaknesses. And what's funny is the weaknesses in one film are oftentimes the strengths in the fucking other, which is why I said earlier I would have to put them both both as fucking equals because 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 almost everything is like counterbalanced perfectly. And if you've seen Willy Wonka and the and the Chocolate Factory and you love it, this is a fantastic retelling of that story and the changes that they made between that film and this one make this thing feel like a totally unique film telling essentially the same story. So yes, I can absolutely recommend this thing. It is fantastic. I'm really happy that I got it in a in a in a Blu-ray 3 pack with Corpse Bride and Beetlejuice because well, I love fucking Beetlejuice and as and as my review on this on, on this very on this very channel shows, I, an, I I adored Corpse Bride. So, at least now I know that all three movies in that fucking 3 pack are great. And this guys is fantastic because this because this to me is a good sign because this tells me that we may be in for some fun shit this fucking month. God damn it, I hope so. And then I'm looking at the next one on the schedule um cuz I got them all piled over here. I look at that, and, um, yeah, that one there I'm not really looking forward to. But, hey, at least at least I still have to watch Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and that thing was fucking amazing. I can absolutely recommend this, and you know what? I actually feel like watching Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory right now. Thankfully, I've got that thing on Blu-ray. I'm looking at it right now. I'm going to go and watch that, and I'm going to brace myself for the next movie, because, um... 
I really don't want to watch that one, but I, I, I made my stupid, stupid choice, and now I've got to learn to live with it. Anyway, my friends, with that, we come to the close of another Reaction in Review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.